What is cognitive dissonance? This is when the brain has two conflicting ideas. One suggests something and then the contrary idea suggests something else. Example, a wife may say that her husband gives her roses but also beats her up. This will cause anxiety because the brain does not like conflicting ideas. They like harmony so that the person does not suffer from anxious thoughts. If your ideas are always conflicting and there's two opposing beliefs constantly at war within you, you cannot have ease, you cannot have peace, and you cannot be stress-free. You will always be anxious because things are not adding up inside of you and they're not aligning. So this misalignment comes from two opposing thoughts that do not cohere together, okay? Two incoherent things, as I've mentioned. Now, we do not like disharmony or things that don't add up because it's like a little pebble in our shoe that causes, causes us immense irritation and anxiety. So we always have to solve these things in our heads or find some way to resolve them. One of the ways that people resolve them is she will firstly be in denial. She will say, well, maybe he doesn't hit me, it's all my imagination. So she's gaslighting herself. The second thing is justification. Oh, well, he hits me, and, but he also gives me roses and takes off the trash and buys me perfume. But when he hits me, I actually deserve it. Okay, so she justifies it to herself. That's how she accepts the cognitive dissonance within her. The third way is she will diminish it. Yes, he hits me, but he also buys me roses, takes out the trash, gives me perfume, gives me spending, and, and lets me visit my mom. Okay, so she will now counter-attack it with <laughs> numbers to diminish the, um, the main thing which is causing her cognitive dissonance, which is he beats her. The other way is inconsistency. Oh, he doesn't always hit me, but, you know, he doesn't always buy you flowers either. So you see how our mind seeks to play tricks on us to get us to accept something that is bitter pull, something that is unpalatable, unpal something that is undesirable and a bit disgusting and horrible to the psyche, to our principles, to our judgment, to our standards, to our boundaries. We, we seek to compensate with adding in other things to buffer it, to cushion the blow. <laughs> no pun intended. But we seek to cushion it so that it makes it more comfortable, more palatable, more acceptable. And that is how a lot of us lie to ourselves and we accept things into our life that we would never normally accept. I mean, we're quick to point out in other people's lives, oh, she actually puts up with that. I would never do it. But you're not the one living that life. You're not the one with all these conflicting ideas, the good stuff, the bad stuff, the okay stuff, the not okay stuff, the, 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 the realization of what it's going to cost you to actually look at the cognitive dissonance and stand up for it and stand up to it and, and, and take it in. It means what? That you will have to leave this man. Oh boy, the whole castle comes crashing down. The castle from the sky made of sand comes crashing down. The whole world will turn over on its head. Your family will disown you. There's a whole lot of backlash that people seek to escape from by justifying the cognitive dissonance and allowing it to perpetuate so that they can keep living that life that they're living to make it seem like it's not so bitter, but it's also sweet. So I'm just going to stay for the sweet stuff and ignore the bitter stuff. That is cognitive dissonance. What this in effect is us lying to ourselves. It's us gaslighting ourselves. It's us trying to make situation a situation that is unacceptable, acceptable, bearable, tolerable. And this is very dangerous because you end up you end up on a roller coaster ride that keeps on adding more bumps, adding more hills and valleys adding more explosions along the way. And the more you keep trading in yourself for accepting this relationship going downhill, the more you're selling yourself out and selling out on your soul and accepting less than you should have ever accepted and put up with in the beginning anyway, okay? So it's very important that we stop justifying, we stop making rationale and reasonings for why this cognitive dissonance is occurring, meaning this discrepancy in someone's behavior where they are nice sometimes, they're not nice sometimes. You need to have better boundaries and better higher standards so that you won't put up with it and you won't allow it. You'll be like, hey, listen, confront them. This is a way of solving it. You buy me flowers and you do all these nice things, but I can't accept this if you hit me as well because hitting me undoes all of that good stuff. So you need to choose what's it going to be because I'm not going to stick around 
for flowers and black eyes. I'm not going to stick around for bruises and, and chocolates. You know, you've got to choose which one you're going to be and be consistent with it. Sure, we all have bad days. Sure, we all have, you know, downtime and, and we act out of character now and again. But unless it's a character flaw that you keep on repeating, that makes it something that I cannot avoid looking at, I cannot live with you if that is the case. If it's something that occurs, you know, if it's something that occurs now and again, out of character, sure it was a bad day or a bad circumstance and you can pinpoint the circumstance that makes that an occurrence, okay, fine, you can understand it, you can overlook it, you can get an apology and you can move on. But if it's always going on, ongoing, it doesn't cease. At the worst of times it happens, at the best of times it happens, there's no rhyme or reason. They're just always in a bad mood. There was no reason for a bad mood. You need to stop making excuses and stop lying to yourself and allowing the cognitive dissonance to override your faculties of intelligence, thinking, your female intuition, your strong gut feeling, and all of the alarm bells ringing off in you that are telling you that this situation, this friendship, this meal, this habit, like smoking, is bad for you. Yes, it may get the edge off, but it's gonna cause you cancer. Yes, this friendship is wonderful, but she gossips about you behind your back and spreads rumors and envies you. So you need to really pick your battles wisely. Pick your partners wisely because it's a zero-sum game. If they're going to be horrible all the time, or at least most of the time, and buffer it by a few injections to keep you addicted of um, you know, the dopamine hits in the form of their love, their hugs, their affection, intermittently reinforced, that is becoming a trauma bond. They're going to trauma bond you to them so you stay for the good times and you turn a blind eye to the bad times. But you won't just be turning a blind eye, you'll be turning a blue eye. So please, this is a very important thing not to have this cognitive dissonance. Don't let these two conflicting ideas sabotage you because you will never be at peace when deep down you know the truth. The truth that this person is an absolute asshole and you need to let go of them. The truth that this girl does not deserve your friendship. The truth that no matter how much you do for X, Y, or Z, they will never appreciate you, approve of you, or allow you into their circle. And so on and so forth, you get the picture. Stay strong, stay firm to your boundaries, lots of love, and Asalaamu Alaikum, goodbye.